Hello Unity fans. It's been a while. Work and life has been hectic, but I'm back with another episode which I hope you'll enjoy. In the previous video, we started manipulating our terrain, giving us little plots of flat land on which to properly display our building models. We currently have cabins for woodcutters and stonemasons, and our gatherers interact with the resources and their cabins. Keep an eye on the top right corner for links to some of the previous videos if you haven't seen them yet. Today we'll be adding visuals on the map to indicate upgrades to the cabins, making sure that units can interact with the buildings and also find their way past all the additional buildings without trying to walk through them. When placing our cabin, we already make sure that 5 hexes form a flat plot of land for displaying the cabin, and that the unit can only enter and exit from the front of the cabin. We've used invisible walls and invisible roads, which are visualized here, to ensure that the pathfinding algorithm adheres to these rules. We will now expand on this idea while adding some outbuildings to the map. These buildings can serve a number of purposes. One of them could be to indicate upgrades to the cabin in the game. For example, wood production rate can be increased for every upgrade applied. We will implement it for this purpose. When a cabin is first placed, we will add two piles of logs to the two hexes behind the cabin. That will be a level 1 cabin. We will then allow two upgrades to the cabin. For each upgrade, each pile of logs will be presented with a handy shed to keep themselves in shielding them from the elements and improving their quality. This is a very handy way for the player to know the level of his cabins through visuals. It also makes the map more interactive and appealing, compared to only one building in only one spot with only something like a counter indicating the level. Think for a moment about how the game Civilization has evolved over the years. For the first few versions, an entire city had always been confined to a single cell, originally a square, which later became a hexagon. From being founded in the earliest age until sending a mission into space, the city took up the same space on the map. Everything was crammed into that area. The same was true for units. It didn't matter how many units you had together, they could all be stacked onto a single cell originally, the so-called stack of doom or stack of death. Eventually, the units were unstacked so that you could only keep small bands of units that fit together on the same cell, while having more units required you to have more land to place them on. In the most recent installment, version 6, this concept was applied to cities as well. You now had to find appropriate land around the city center to build various different kinds of buildings and districts. This makes your city building decisions a lot more complex and requires a lot more planning to make sure you match the map to what you're trying to achieve, leading to a much deeper experience. Like it or not, it has made the map itself a much more important factor in the game, and a lot more interesting. Of course, we're not close to civilization here, yet, but we can aim to achieve something similar on a small scale. When placing the sheds, we don't want the extra visual elements to completely clog up the map in terms of unit movement, especially when many cabins are located close to each other. So we have to think carefully about what to place where and still allow the units enough freedom of movement. We've placed the cabin itself towards the back of the hex to have some space in front for the unit to move in. I've visualized the possible movements of the unit with the visible walls and roads here, although they will eventually be invisible only keeping the functionality. We can do the same kind of thing for the outbuildings. If we place the log piles and sheds towards the back of the two hexes directly behind the cabin, there's enough space between the cabin and the sheds for a unit to move through. So we allow units to pass behind the cabin from left to right and right to left. However, we block the other edges next to the sheds by walls, so units don't try crossing those edges and end up walking through the sheds. This approach gives the units enough freedom of movement to get to all sides of the cabin and its outbuildings. Let's see how the scripts need to be adjusted to implement this. 
Firstly, we're going to move our cabin prefab away from the woodcutter unit itself and into our general prefab linker. Our all gatherer prefabs class, which currently contains only the unit prefabs, should now link to the cabin prefab as well. We could again create some variety by adding a few slightly different cabins here and choosing one at random or in sequence. But we keep it at one cabin prefab for now. While we are here, we also add links to prefabs for the original heaps of logs, as well as for the updated states, for both the left and right hexes behind the cabin. I've placed some prefabs in there that are carefully positioned such that they will be situated on the back part of the hex with a road passing in front. Now, whenever we instantiate the cabin, we need to also instantiate the outbuildings or piles of logs. We already calculated the direction the cabin is facing, so we can take the neighboring hex in the opposite direction, as well as the one next to it, as the two hexes that the logs or sheds should be placed on. We can also calculate the required rotation for these from the direction and make sure they are rotated properly. We also activate the walls for these two cells and add the two roads in the correct directions. Again, we will eventually make these the invisible versions, but we visualize it for now so we can ensure it works correctly. And if we now place a cabin, we can clearly see the available paths around the cabin, lock pile and shed. Instead of starting with two log piles, I've upgraded one to a shed from the start. Note that the unit can theoretically still walk from the log piles or sheds through the cabin, since there is no wall there anymore. It is also quite possible for other units to take the path between the cabin and the sheds, since it counts as a normal path in the pathfinding algorithm. But we don't want the unit to walk through the cabin and we also want to discourage other units from passing through the woodcutter's property, unless they can't find some reasonable path around it. We can solve both of these issues by implementing higher movement cost for the cabin and shed hexes. This would make those hexes unpopular with the pathfinding algorithm, and it would rather follow a cheaper path around them if possible. But it would take the path if there was no other viable option. Also, when one of those hexes is indeed the ultimate destination, it would still find the path to it, no matter how costly the last step would be. So, we need to store the extra movement cost of the cell in an integer in the hex cell script. Let's make the value of this extra movement cost a parameter by adding it to the hex metrics constants. And we add a large movement cost for the cabin or base, and a smaller movement cost for the outbuildings so we can differentiate in future applications as well. Now, when we instantiate the cabin, we set the extra movement cost of the cell it is placed on. And when we instantiate the log piles, we do the same for the outbuilding hexes. Next, we just need to add this extra movement cost to the two functions that calculate movement cost, the one in the hex unit script and the one in the hex grid script. Now that we have these extra hexes set up, Let's make the woodcutter walk to a log pile or shed to drop off his logs, rather than to his cabin as before. In order to achieve this, we need to store references to the possible locations where logs can be dropped off. We previously catered for the location of the cabin or base, and we can now cater for an array of storage locations. In this case, we'll use two but we will develop the scripts in such a way that we could later add any number of storage hexes without having to change our scripts. We would even be able to add the shed of another cabin or special locations on the map as drop-off locations. When the outbuildings get created, we now store references to those cells for the unit to use later on. We have already implemented find path to base and travel to base methods for our units previously and we can adjust them slightly to allow our unit to also find a path to a storage hex and travel to it. We need to add the storage based actions to our action list and replace the base actions in our action sequence with storage actions. The storage actions are very similar to the base actions, actually exactly the same for the travel methods at the moment. 
So we could actually write more general methods here and just pass through the correct parameters depending on the scenario. But for now, I'll keep them separate to keep it simple. One slight difference in the find path to store method when compared to the base method is that there is now an array of possible storage hexes. So instead of just searching for one path to the cabin, we now search for a path to every single storage hex in the array and keep the shortest one as our ultimate path to take. This will let the woodcutter carry his logs to the side that makes sense. We could add another step in here where he puts down his basket before the logs disappear into the shed and he picks up his basket again before walking off. This was covered in a previous video so I will not include it again here. I've set up a few test examples to show the paths taken in different scenarios. First off, we see how one unit will walk around another unit's property, if there is a reasonable path around it, even though the path through the property is shorter, since it is being discouraged to walk through the property. Next, we see that it will take this shorter path if the alternative gets excessively long, and would also return to its own storage hex using the same path. Finally, we can see how a unit would tend to stay on one side of the cabin since moving over to the other side is an expensive path, since he has to cross over a storage hex. However, he will move over to the trees on the other side if the remaining trees on his current side start getting way too far. We can definitely add some more functionality and as it stands, the stonemason will not actually work until we also add the required prefabs for it in the prefab linker. But this is a good place to stop for now. We've added visual building upgrades to the map in a way that directs unit movement in a certain way without being too obtrusive and makes the map more interesting and interactive. I hope you'll consider subscribing if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. Also, drop a comment if there's something on your mind or if you would like me to expand on something. Goodbye.